Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. Today we are creating a look inspired by the super successful show Euphoria. On our model tailor, I threw rhinestones in the eye look and we created a really simple, lightweight, natural base that overall just complemented the complete look. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the creme de la mer to moisturize our model's skin. I really don't use a whole lot of this because it's a, a thicker cream. I like to place a small amount into the palms of my hands, warm it up really well, and then lightly press it into the skin. When it comes to using creams or moisturizers that have a thicker consistency to it, less really is more because the more I apply, the longer it's going to take for the cream, um, or excuse me, for the, for the skin to absorb the cream. So anyways, now that I'm finishing up with prepping Taylor's skin, we can move on to the makeup. I'm first going to take my plexiglass illuminator along with a Morphe Glow Stunner tinted moisturizer in the shade Tan Glow 7, mix them together on the back of my hand and start applying it on with the sponge. I've mixed them together to show you how you can incorporate the, uh, the plexiglass illuminator into your foundation routine rather than just using it alone to prep the skin with. When mixed in with your foundation, it gives it that immediate luminous effect that leaves your skin looking like glass. I'll even mix this into a matte foundation and it'll still transform it into something that leaves the skin looking super glowy. Now, let's talk about why I chose the tinted moisturizer today. I wanted a very, very light coverage to the skin. I want it to look super natural by keeping the products lightweight. And then anywhere we want to go in with a tad bit more coverage, I'll do so with a concealer. But this is kind of the vibe I got from these Euphoria looks. Authentic looking complexion makeup that embraces the skin's texture while keeping most of the glam on the eyes, which is exactly what we're going to do today. So now that I've finished up applying on this tinted moisturizer along with the plexiglass illuminator, I'm going to head over to the one size turn up the base butter silk concealer in the shade medium 4NG to spot conceal around the face, adding a bit more coverage to the areas that we want to disguise before blending it out with a sponge. Now, if you really want that flawless skin effect, I'd recommend using something with, you know, <laughs> a bit more coverage than the tinted moisturizer I used, but it just comes down to preference. Some people love that full glam, which is usually what you see in my tutorials, and others like that very natural, no makeup makeup look. There's not one that's better than the other. You just kind of have to tailor it to your liking. It was important to me though today to keep it as simple as possible for the complexion. And I know this might sound a little like a little crazy because we're also used to aiming for perfection with makeup, but I didn't want it to look too... Um, I, I, I didn't want it to look too perfect. I want the makeup to look a little worn into the skin. I'm not going in with a bright under eye highlight and, and, and baking with powder and all that. And trust me, it's really hard for me not to go full, full glam with a look, but I'm taking more of a, a TV makeup approach here rather than that red carpet glam approach. You know what I mean? TV and movie makeup has more realism to it and shares more of the character's story. And in this case, I found a lot of the Euphoria looks consisted of minimalistic complexion while amping up the eye look with jewels and rhinestones, which is what we'll do later on. So I'm gonna finish up concealing around the eyes here and I'll be right back. Alrighty, next up, I'm using this Too Faced Born This Way concealer in the shade Mocha to add some depth and warmth to the perimeter of Taylor's forehead and along the hollows of her cheekbones. You may have noticed there a second ago that I first applied this to the back of my hand and then worked the bristles of the brush into the pigment before I started buffing it into the skin. By doing it this way, I'm ensuring I won't use too much product, just enough to give us that warmth we're looking for. And even though I'm using a brush here to blend this, you can also also use a sponge if you prefer. I find myself personally kind of going back and forth between brushes and sponges to get that seamless blend. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now to mattify specific areas of the face, I'm using the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Pressed Powder and lightly applying this on with a brush. And notice how I said there, specific areas of the face. I don't wanna apply this everywhere because I don't want to diminish that glow everywhere. I strategically use this to mattify and bring down the shine where maybe it's not the most, you know, the, the most flattering. So around the eyes, nostrils, center of the forehead, and around the mouth. This is a great powder for this purpose because it's completely translucent. And in my opinion, one of the best translucent pressed powders on the market. You can see what a big difference it makes to the areas we apply it to. It takes down that shine without adding coverage, which is important to me here because I don't want to add more coverage. I want the natural beauty of her skin peeking through the little makeup we've applied. And with a look like this, I'd rather under apply powder now than to over apply. So I'm being light handed with it. We'll see how the skin looks after we do the rest of the makeup. And if need be, we can apply a little bit more powder at the end. To blush up the cheeks, I'm using the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Grace and applying this on in a similar manner I had applied on the Liquid Bronzer by applying it to the back of my hand first and then buff it into the skin. And to keep it real here, I uh, <laughs> I kind of messed up. I usually like to apply liquid blushes before I use any powder, but... I, I kind of forgot, but it's not the end of the world here. We'll make it work. It, it still turns out beautiful and does the job. And the reason I say this is because a lot of times when you apply liquids or creams on top of powders, it tends to cake up and leave behind a patchy blend. But because I didn't use all that much powder here, I didn't run into any issues with blending out this pigment. It turned out just fine. To start the brow process, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. I say the brow process as if it's going to be this real intense brow transformation, but in reality, this is the only brow product I'm using today. You're seeing me here start by running this product through the brow hairs against the direction they grow in to get them fully saturated with the product. And then I start brushing them back down into the final shape I want them to lay in. I'm keeping the brows in uniform with the complexion today. Simple clean and understated, which I think will perfectly complement the eye makeup we do next. So for eyes, I'm starting with this shade here from the Disney Cinderella eyeshadow palette from Sigma and blending this out with a large eyeshadow blending brush all over the lid, which will give us a real soft and diffused effect. I want to keep the shadows really sheer, so I'm not going to build up the pigment with these. I want just a hint of color and let the rhinestones we apply here soon have the spotlight. To build up the dimension in this, I'm dipping into this shade here from the same palette and brushing this onto the inner half of the upper lid. I thought this shade was really pretty. It adds to the color story, but while also keeping it simple and easy. All the shadows I'm using today are from the same eyeshadow palette, so it's kind of like a one-stop shop. And the trick to this is to not overthink it. Just throw the shadow pigment on, buff and blend it out, and move on. So with that said, the next shadow I'm using is this bright shimmery shade here, and I'm packing that onto the inner corner to brighten this area up. You can even spritz your brush with a bit of setting spray for more color payoff, but I think this looks really good as is. Next up, I'm dipping into this purple glitter shade here and lightly applying this all over the lid. This is definitely more of a glitter than a shimmer, which is why I'm using it on top of the other shadows. We can see the color story come together here and the beautiful dimension it's giving, almost matching the backdrop that I have going on here, huh? I like it. It's definitely giving us those euphoric vibes, I think, without making it look like we tried too hard, so. I'm really, really happy so far. And for the lower lash line here, I'm just using the same shadows we used up on the upper lid. I didn't want to go too dramatic here since, again, I want the attention to be on the rhinestones, but bringing those shimmers down to the lower lid gives into that sort of grungy glam look that's happening with the upper lid. And then dipping into this deep purple shade here, I'm going to wing out her upper lash line just a tad. Nothing too crazy, just a little something to spice up the look. I almost grabbed my black eyeliner to do this, but then I was like, nope, Spence, wheel it on in, less is more. I'm really trying to keep this as simple as possible, and then if need be, we can always add more. 
So once we're done with the shadows, I'm gonna grab some lash glue and these rhinestones here and start applying them on. Now I found the easiest way to do this is by mapping out first with the glue where you want to apply the stones. And once you have the glue applied, grab the stones and just start placing them right on top. I'm using the tweezers to do this, which is easier than it looks, I promise. But to make it even easier, there are these um, like these wax tip applicators you can find online that you know might help you if you struggle a bit with using tweezers. And the rhinestones I'm using, I, I got off Amazon. I remember them being super affordable. I can't can't remember exactly which ones they were. Um, <laughs> oh gosh, I can't believe I want to say this. So, okay, how do I even? So to, I bought these years ago. Okay, and during that time, Amazon would offer like these one month free Prime membership for newly signed up accounts. So I would just create an email and sign up a new a new account every month, so I didn't have to pay for Prime. <laughs> Listen, we've all been there. Don't judge me. The point is, I don't remember what account it was, so I don't have the order history. But if you just look up eye rhinestones or nail rhinestones, you'll find a whole bunch to choose from in different colors and sizes. And it's only like 10 or 15 bucks. It'll last you forever. Once I've done the other eye makeup off camera, I'm going to reach for the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push-Up Mascara to run through her top and bottom lashes. I'm going to be generous with this because I want that intensity there, but I'm not going to pair it with you know false lashes today. I think lashes would just be a little too much for the vibe I'm going for, but hey, if you want lashes, you go for it, baby. Don't let me hold you back. Remember, as I said, it's all about tailoring this to what you like and what makes you feel the most confident. So for the lips, I'm using the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Liner in the shade Chai and using this to trace the border of her lips. I think the brand did a fantastic job with this formula. It glides right on, they're pigmented, they last, and they have a lot of different shades to choose from. I think they released 18 or, or, or 20 or something like that. And they're really precise too, which is nice if you like that sharp lip line. But in today's case, I'm going to diffuse it out a bit with a, you know, a concealer brush, which I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, so here's what I was referring to. There's no product on the brush I'm using. I'm just using it to diffuse out the edges for that softer, more worn in look that I'm going for. And then to top it off, I'm applying this gloss from Bite Beauty in the shade Guava Puff to give us a glossy finish. I like this lip duo because it looks quite natural on her and it's really easy to touch up with throughout the day. We didn't complicate things by throwing in a lipstick or anything, just a little gloss and bada bing bada boom, that's all we need. And I've head back to the Makeup Forever powder we used earlier to bring down a little more of that shine throughout the T-zone. I'm loving how natural this looks. We can see her, her gorgeous skin through the makeup we've used. It doesn't look like we've layered and layered on the makeup. It's breathable and just overall really pretty and effortless. And with that said, this is the final step in how I created this euphoria-inspired makeup look on our naturally beautiful model.